Kira Koto Katoa. Welcome, Wanganoi, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, special guests, to this very special tribute evening to the life and legend that was Sir Peter Snell. On this day in 1962, we've just walked the very same track uh, that Peter ran on, and we're standing right here on the finish line where Sir Peter broke the mile record. Just before I ask uh, our co martyr John Mighty to welcome you all here and bless us in this space, can I get a little show of hands as to who was here at the gardens back in 1962? Quite a few. How fabulous. And thank you so much for coming back out for this very special event this evening. So I'm going to ask our co martyr John Mighty just a place the the Wanganui District Council, Athletics Wanganui, and the Wanganui Sports and Heritage Trust. Welcome and extend grateful thanks to all of you for being here this evening. And while we're saying our thank yous, a special thank you to Brass Wanganui for leading us in that fine track around the, tra around the track. So a wee round of applause to thank you. We're going to do something a little special whilst I grab my, oh, thanks Joe. 
um, my run sheet. We are going to involve Sir Peter in the evening slightly differently than, thank you Joe, than we might have liked to. Uh, but at this point in time, I'd like to invite Coming athletic stars, and in their hot war hands, Jenna and Travis have a very special cap which was presented to Sir Peter by the Wanganui Sports and Heritage Trust for um, signifying his world beating mile record at these very gardens. So, a replica of that cap has been made, and Jenna and Travis, with accompaniment by Mia Hamish, are going to place the cap. On Sir Peter, so any of you who want to capture some video or some photographs, we urge you to move into place. Once the cap is on Sir Peter's head, we will sit in silence together for a minute to honour the extraordinary life of Sir Peter Snow. Thank you. Now let's break the silence by making as much noise as we can with a hearty round of applause for Sir Peter Snow. Thank you, Gina and Travis. Wonderful to have you here with us this evening. And we'll be seeing a little bit more of Gina a little later in the proceedings. But right now, it's my great pleasure with his sports trivia knowledge, which we all know he's an absolute mastermind at. Um, but he's going to share a, a few points of reflection for us. Thank you so much, Ian Hamish. Na mihi nui ki koutou katoa. Tēnā tangata whenua o moha nui. Tēnā koutou. history. He's part of our history and I hope uh, we are part of his. Because on this track, well it wasn't actually a grass track, 27 years ago, 57 years ago, tonight, he broke the world mile record. He'd already announced himself to the world in 1960. He won gold medal distance 800 at uh, the Rome Olympics. And there was the expectation that he could be New Zealand's first sub four minute miler when he came to Wanganui uh, in January 1962. 
I know. I, I saw the hands. So many of you here that night. I'm so jealous. And it was an extraordinary race because everything went wrong. I started off too slow until uh, Cossa, Brian, Brian Cossa, who was the appointed uh, pacemaker, uh, leapt out in front and suddenly it started getting a good pace. And even though it was a little bit b below world record, sorry, a sub four minute mile uh, pace after the first uh, lap, I think it was 61 seconds, uh, it was still a good tick. And then Murray Holberg was directly behind Cossa and Holberg was meant to take over, but Holberg lost his legs. And Peter Snell had to go directly behind uh, Cossa. And at 200 metres, he looked around for the next pacemaker to come up behind. There was no one. And so Snell had to leave from 200 metres on until suddenly Bruce Tuller, who was English, raced past him and looked like he was heading for the win. And that was the spark for Snell to run essentially one of the most perfect races ever run. And I want to read you something that he actually wrote about that mile and that second glasses off because my eyesight I'm getting older. As we swung into the back straight with 300 yards to run, I had him covered. I wasn't worrying about him, I was racing time, not Tuller. At that point I abandoned the studied relaxation of my running and let go with my finishing drive. This is the moment when you stop consciously controlling what you're doing and pour everything into driving out the speed. I found myself running in complete freedom from restraint. I don't think I've ever felt such a glorious feeling of strength and speed without strain as I did during that final accelerating 300 yards. I knew I must be well within four minutes as I raced the last curve. I straightened, heard for the first time the rising roar of the crowd and kept on driving. That roar of the crowd, the people banging on the hoardings, the, the tin of the hoardings, and it was echoing around the river valley. It was Peter Snell's record, but I tell you what, every one of you who was here helped him beat the record. He was always going to beat the four minute, but he beat, beat the world record with 354.4. That wasn't his only achievement. Two weeks later, he broke the world record in the 800 metres and the 80 yards. He was later to break the kilometre record. And then uh, he, he uh, broke the mile record in the 864. His 800 metres run in Christchurch, two weeks after he broke the world record, would have won the gold medal in the Beijing was a remarkable athlete and a remarkable human being. The first thing he said after winning the 1960 uh, gold medal in the 800 metres, he turned around and said, oh, who won? So to honour Peter, uh, Sir Peter Snell uh, a bit further, we're going to ask another great athlete, Rod Dixon, to come up and provide his memories of Peter. Rod Dixon, uh, is another of the, the huge heritage of black, black, black singleted athletes wowing the world on the track. For me, Rod and the late Dick Quakes and John Walker were my best now because I was a bit too late. And Rod was my favourite of the three for three reasons. One, he had the coolest moustache. Uh, second, He's the only one of the three who didn't need a politics, well done, he avoided a bullet there. And third, I was there in 1974 at the Commonwealth Games, I was six years old and I was watching from the stands uh, in the most remarkable 1500 metre race uh, ever. So, but before we ask you to get up, I'd like you to come, because we have a very special presentation to you, Rod, a presentation to honour uh, your Sub four minute mile here in 1974, 3.55.5. You're the sixth person to break the four minute 